Hello, welcome back. The microphone is working now, so that's exciting. Uh, we're back into chapter 9. Uh, last couple of days you had some time to work on 9.1. ton of vocabulary there. Uh, remember the big idea. Could it happen by chance? How likely is it to get a result this extreme or more extreme if the claim is true? Remember we had with Scylla Sun, our claimed 80% free throw shooter. She goes out and shoots 64%. And we say, how likely is it an 80? Is it for an 80% shooter to shoot 64%? And there's some probability. We can calculate it using some knowledge back from Chapter 7, dealing with sampling distributions of sample proportions. And uh, we can use that uh, math to help us determine determine these p-values, determine the probabilities that we get a result this extreme. And then we have to say, how, how, how rare is rare enough? How rare does something have to be before we say, eh, I don't think that's true? And we said 5% is the typical value, but that will vary. Uh, we had one-sided and two-sided hypotheses. Maybe you think her number is higher than that, in which case you look at the alternative higher, in which case higher evidence would say, oh, that's She's wrong. Uh, One-sided, I think what we all really decided is it was probably lower than 80%. And so we were looking for extreme low values. How low does it have to be before we say this is too weird? Or uh, we might, it might be better or worse. We might, we might just think it's different, in which case we do a not equal to a two-sided alternative. Think about what that means. Values really far away on either side will let us say, I don't think the proportion really is 80%. I think it's different than that. So you might have better, worse, or different, and that just depends on your levels of prior knowledge. Uh, remember, your hoes are always about parameters. We make claims about parameters. I know the truth about the pop or excuse me, about the sample. Sample statistic, I know what it is. It's some specified value. Uh, but not necessarily true for parameters. We don't know what the parameter is. Uh, we have to find it. Excuse me for a second. All right, I'm back. Uh, and we were talking about parameters, hoes and haws. Uh, what do we got here? We got p-values. The probability, this is a question I can just guarantee you're going to have a question about in your AP test. They love it. What's the probability of getting a result this extreme or more extreme if the null hypothesis is true? And I'm going to keep circling this assumption here. We're assuming the null hypothesis is true. Cool. Uh, we had rules about when to reject or fail to reject the hoe, uh, and we remember Snoop Dogg, and he says, if the P is low, then the hoe must go. Uh, and that, that helps a lot of people remember that. wonder why. Uh, so you need to know that. You uh, need to know how to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. Remember, we don't ever accept it. We just say, uh, we do have enough evidence for the ha or we don't. Did some uh, stuff about 9.1, about uh, drawing conclusions, state plan do, conclude. We did everything but the do step here uh, on uh, Thursday and Friday, or Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, we set up one. We did a state plan, a do, and a conclude. Here's the do. That's what we're going to do today. Uh, and that's, uh, that's where we were. So make sure you take a look back at um, one of the hardest topics on this stuff. The hardest topic being type 1 and type 2 error. Rejecting a true hoe, type 1, the hoe is true, type 1 error. Failing to reject a false hoe, type 2 error, the ha is true. Uh, and uh, I think uh, this one is the best for me. False positives are type 1 errors and false negatives are type 2 errors. Not pregnant, telling a, preg a, man, a man that's not pregnant that he is pregnant, that's a type 1 error. Telling a pregnant woman that she is not pregnant, that's a type 2 error. Uh, again, they're the hoe being not pregnant. That's a funny statement to record on a video. Uh, how to increase the power. Uh, three main ways. Make an alpha larger, increasing your sample size, or testing claims further from the truth. Then go back and think about what that means. You will be asked questions about power, but I can't review it every single lecture. So we're 9.2 tests about a population proportion. It'll be either a uh, one uh, sample Z test for P, or it'll be a two sample T test for P1 minus P2. Maybe it'll be two sample Z test for P1 minus P2. Uh, we're dealing with either where is this single proportion or are these other two proportions the same? We'll see this in more detail. Uh, the Z test for population proportion, I'm going to add the word one sample 
Um, I'm always going to name three things. How many samples are there? What's the underlying distribution of the test statistic? And what's the parameter of interest? So you're always going to name these things. It's either going to be one or two sample. Then you're going to say something about is it a uh, is it uh, a Z or is it a T? Well, if if it's Z, it's probably proportions. It's T, it's probably means. We're either going to do tests or intervals. Again, tests or intervals. And it's either going to be for a proportion or for a mean. So that's kind of where we're at. Think about what we've done. We've got a lot of tests in our pocket. We've got a lot of intervals in our pocket. We've got one sample Z intervals for proportions. We've got one sample T intervals for means. And we have the two sample versions. Two sample Z intervals for proportions. Two sample T intervals for means. And now we're going to in introduce the interval, or excuse me, the meet, ah, the tests part of this. I will be doing tests. So what's our testing here? Our hypothesis, either the proportion is equal to what we claim it to be, or one of the one-sided or two-sided, why did I write that out? Alternatives. Uh, three conditions you're always going to check, random, normal, and independent. Duh. Uh, or you're going to be looking at expected counts here. Um, you want expected counts to be greater than or equal to 10. It is the same condition, guys. We're just checking it on uh, n p naught and n1 minus p naught. Do, do yourself a, put, put little knots down there. The expected numbers of successes and failures have to be at least 10. Test statistic, yeah, your test statistic here, but uh, it really our calculator is going to do this for you. I, I'm, I'm just not going to make you do this stuff by hand. Uh, you're going to do it in your calculator, uh, and you're going to report the values your calculator gives. Uh, I'm far more interested in your ability to interpret this stuff, write this stuff down. If you're saying, oh, I thought this was going to be a class about coming up with the right numbers. Man, with a 45-minute FRQ test where you got two questions, I just don't think it's going to be that number heavy. I mean, there's going to be numbers. You're going to come up with numbers, but there's going to be a lot of writing, uh, and I suspect that'll be, that'll be the meat on this exam. Uh, and we also have the two sample case. So uh, again, we call this a two sample because there's two samples. Uh, Z interval because we know the underlying distribution is the Z standard normal distribution. So this is a two sample Z interval for P1 minus P2. And another way we might say this is we might say this is about a difference in proportions. All right, you can't. I don't think you can see all that. There you go. Difference in proportions. So, all right, and you have quite a bit of writing there. Um, you should write, read through it, especially for the independence bit. Um, that's just kind of the logic of it. So, read through it for the logic. The big thing I want you to see, and the only real difference, is that we all of a sudden, for our conditions, have to check this thing called PC hat. And what is this thing? This is the combined proportion. Why do we need this combined proportion? This is our estimate of the combined proportion, but what the heck do we need a combined proportion for? If you look on the last page, it doesn't tell you uh, what the ho and the ha were down for the comparing two proportions case. I'm going to tell you the ho is going to be p1 minus p2 equals 0, or we could write that alternatively as p1 equals P2. And what are we saying there? We're saying they're the same. Saying they're the same. Uh, we're the saying they're the same, but we're not saying exactly what they're equal to. Remember, we're just saying that they're the same. We're not saying where they are. We're saying they're the same. So this combined proportion, this PC hat, this is our best estimate of the shared proportion under the assumption of the hoe. We're assuming the null hypothesis is true. That is P1 equals P2. But just because they're equal, it doesn't mean we do equals what number? This number is our best estimate of what those two excuse me proportions are equal to. Alright, 
Uh, here we have our Z statistic. Uh, look, take, take a look at what this is saying. This is saying how far apart are our observed proportions given that we thought they were the same. So with the difference we should see is zero. We should have a Z squared of zero. But we're not going to probably. And down here, what is this? This is the standard deviation of uh, p1 hat minus p2 hat under that assumption. So again we have uh, our one-sided and two-sided alternatives, one-sided and two-sided, and let's get to it. So we're going to do these in our calculator uh, for the most part. Remember what this is doing though. So think about what was happening here. We assumed that p1 equals p2. Well if that's true then think about what should be in the middle of our p1 hats minus p2 hats. In the middle should be zero if they're, they are the same. But, you know, we're not going to get zero. How spread out is this? It's spread out according to that uh, standard deviation down there. So we're going to skip this review example for the sake of time, uh, and we're going to take a, a look straight at uh, some of these. AP state plan do conclude templates. Uh, if it ever says if there are enough evidence to show that some proportion is less than something. Uh, when, when we're doing these, these are very straightforward four-step processes. You, you should love the four-step process by now. State plan do conclude um, so, e-commerce research company claims that 60% or more grad students have bought drinks for their grad advisor. What is this question? Uh, so, our state step. Change this question. Uh, P is the proportion of grad students who have taken their advisor out for a beverage. What kind of beverage are they drinking? I don't know. Uh, maybe some tea. So, uh, state, that's our proportion. Uh, a, group, a consumer group is suspicious of the claim and thinks the proportion is lower than 60%. Okay, so, ho, p equals 0.6, ha, p less than 0.6. Random sample of 80 students show that only 22 have ever done so. Is there ev enough evidence okay, to show that the proportion is lower than 60% at alpha equals 0.10? So we've got our state step, our plan step. We're going to perform, well, what do we got here? We've got a one sample. We've got a Z test for P, a proportion. We've got three conditions associated with that. We've got the randomness condition. We took a random sample of 80 students. Uh, normal. Uh, we need to check that n p naught and n1 minus p naught are at least 10. That is 80 times 0 0.6 and 80 times 0 0.4. Those are 48 and 32, both at least 10. Uh, so we've got random normal. I've, I've run out of room for independence. Uh, independent. Recall that little n has to be less than or equal to cap n over 10. So I'm just going to say here that there are at least 800 grad students. Okay. And we've got our statement. We've got our plan. And uh, now we go ahead and do it, and you're going to say, oh, this is the best part. Get your calculators out. Stat, tests, one prop Z test. One prop Z test. That's what your calculator calls it. This is a one sample Z test for proportions, but almost all that's in there. Uh, what's our hypothesized proportion? 0.6. 22 successes out of 80 trials, and we thought it was going to be a less than. Done. Did I go too fast? Go back and look at it again. Uh, what do we got here? I got a Z statistic. This would not happen very often. I'm going to record all these numbers. Negative 5.93. Let's think about that for a second. We're talking about something that's almost six standard deviations below the mean. How many standard deviations do I usually draw out? Three? So we're talking about something. My God, I can't, I'm not even going to think about what this we're talking about here. 
we're talking about if here's zero we're talking about one two three four we're talking like about out here on my paper and I don't have that so that's gonna be really rare it's our p-value oh it's got scientific notation let's write it out without scientific notation 0 0.1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 1 4 8 that's pretty small our observed p hat was 0.275 and I already know that the sample size was 80 so I've got that I've got what do I really need there I need my z value and my p value now I go ahead and conclude uh, since our p-value is clearly much less than alpha. What do we do? This is rare enough. Our p-value is out less than alpha. We reject the null hypothesis, the ho. We have sufficient evidence to conclude that. What are we going to conclude? You're going to go back right to the phrase. You're going to go, that the true proportion is lower than 60%. That the true proportion of grad students who've done this oops, sorry. is less than 60%. Okay, let's zoom out so you can see all that out my head in the way. Here you go, state plan to conclude. Um, it's pretty straightforward. What are we saying here? We're saying that if, if it had really been 60%, we went out and we saw from the sample it was like 28%, but they said it was 60%. How often would we get this result or a result more extreme if this was true? Almost never. This would almost never happen. Would. Almost never happen. What's never? That is real dang close to zero as far as, you know, our lives are concerned. Would almost never happen if the hoe is true. We're talking about something that wouldn't actually occur if the null hypothesis was true. Yes, I'm still. still. Maybe I'll mute that next time. Okay, so we've got one down. What are we going to do? I'm going to do maybe one, maybe two more of these. Um, so, hairs all over the place. Gosh dang it. All right, so let's keep moving. Oh, nice. Cool. We're going to do a two sample example. Um, do you want to do television commercials or low dose aspirin? We're going to do television commercials. Okay. What do we got here? Uh, we got a two sample case. AP question 2012 number four. I think this will be it. And then I'll give you guys a lot of time to work on your homework today. Uh, maybe we'll do one more example. Eh, we might, we might do one more. I'll get it done. Less than half an hour, though, I promise. Uh, survey organization uh, conducted telephone interviews in December 2008, in which 1,009 randomly selected adults in the U.S. responded to the following question. Oh, boy. You think people are answering more surveys now that we're stuck at home? I bet, I bet people are. I bet I'm, I'm more likely to talk to somebody on the phone. Why? I got girlfriend over here, Janie. She's doing math homework. What else do I got to talk to in here? I got this boy. He's a big fatty. This is Watson. He's very happy to be here. He's my best boy. He, he was laid down. I fell asleep last night, and he just laid down on my shoulder. Yes, I'm going crazy talking to the cats, but I love him. But I love him. Okay. So, uh, let's, let's, let's keep it. Let's keep it moving here. My point, you're more likely to talk to a survey uh, person because, uh, you know, you don't talk to anybody. Survey organization conducted some telephone interviews in 08. Uh, 1,009 randomly selected adults. Okay, so that's in 08. 
answer the following question. Uh, of the 1,000, do you, at the present time, do you think television commercials are an effective way to promote a new product? I bet they are right now because, god damn, how much TV is everybody watching? I'm watching a lot of TV. A lot of TV. Of the 1,009 surveyed, 676 responded yes. Cool. In December 2007, 622 of the 1020 uh, responded yes to the same question. Okay, so we got... Uh, in 2007, I'm going to call that N1. I had 622 people say yes. I'm going to call that X1. In um, 2008, I'm going to call that uh, N2 and X2. Excuse me. Do the data provide convincing evidence that the proportion who would respond yes has changed? Changed is not equal to anymore from 07 to 08. It's a four-step process question. Let's get us out of here. Uh, state P1, P2, these are going to be almost the same definition, so I'm going to use ditto marks. Uh, the proportion of U.S. adults who would say yes in 2007, the proportion of U.S. adults would say yes. 2008. Great. Okay. Uh, we have our proportions. Uh, my null hypothesis is that they're the same. Why? I don't know. Why would it have changed over the two years? I don't have any evidence. To make. Well, maybe I do. We'll see if it does. Uh, our ho is that they're equal. Our ha is that they are no longer equal to each other. All right. So state. Um, plan step. You know, you got to name the thing you're going to do. What are we going to do? We're going to do a two proportion. We're going to test for the difference between, excuse me, two sample, two samples taken, two sample Z test for, you can write P1 minus P2, or you can write for proportions. I don't care. They're equivalent. Uh, so that's our plan. We've got three conditions. We've got random. We were told we took random samples. From 2007 and 2008. Normal's a little weirder. Um, so if you look up how they checked this. In 2012, they said 622 is greater than 10. And, you know, 398 is greater than 10. And 676 is greater than 10. And whatever 1,009 minus 676 is, what is that, 333, is that right? Yeah. All greater than 10. But that's not how we check that anymore. We have to check this. So first we need to find what is PC hat. What is the combined proportion of people that said yes? Let's do that together. That's um, 676 plus 622, so that's the numerators, 1298, divided by 1020 plus 1009. So my observed proportion, we're going to call it 0.64. That's our combined proportion of people that said yes. So if we put the two groups together, so that's our best estimate of the shared uh, proportions. What am I going to do here? Uh, I'm going to write that N1 PC hat 1 N1 PC hat. What is N1 times PC hat? Well, that's the answer times 1020. So let's say 652. So 1020 times 0 0.64, that's 652. N1 1 minus PC hat. How many expected failures were there? Well, you can just do 1020 minus 652 to find that answer, and that's going to be 368. And N2PC hat, that's going to be, I don't know what that is, 1009 times 0.6397, called 645. And N2 1 minus PC hat, it's gone off the screen, is... Call 364. Okay. So these are the expected number 
of successes and failures, stay with me on this one, the expected numbers of successes and failures acting under the assumption that these two proportions are the same. And PC hat is our best estimate of that shared proportion. Where did that come from? It came from 622 plus 676 over 1020 plus 1009. Where is this formula? You're saying, how the hell am I going to remember that? Can you guess where it is, boys and girls? It's on your damn formula sheet. Let's get it out. Oh, look, I'm so good at turning to things. PC hat. When P1 is P2 equals P2 is assumed, circle this. I'm not going to circle it because mine's nice. Circle this and write 10.2. When P1 equals P2 is assumed, that's the PC hat business we come from. Your calculator is doing the top part. You don't have to know that. You do have to do the bottom part. Nearly there. Uh, so we've actually just done the most work that's going to be involved in this problem. And that is checking the normal condition uh, for independence we need to assume uh, U.S. population is larger than 10 times N1 or 10 times N2, which is clearly true. Uh, the population of the United States, I don't know. 330 million. How many adults are there? Probably less than that, but you know, a lot. Uh, state plan. Go ahead and do. Excuse me. Uh, you're going to go to tests, stat tests. We're going to do a two prop Z test. Uh, we had 622 out of 1020 say yes the first time. Then we had 676 out of 1009, say yes the second time. We just are asked if it changed. Did it change? What does changed mean? Changed means not equal to. So we're going to choose the not equal to alternative. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit equal, equal, enter, enter. Uh, and I'm going to record those values. Uh, I'm just going to record Z and P. That's all I actually need. The birds are out, and the cats are chirping. All right. Um, do. My Z statistic is negative 2.82. My P value is 0 0.004. Let's call it 8. Okay. Again, this is something that would not happen very often. Think about what we're talking about. We're saying that we thought they were the same. So we thought we should get a value somewhere in here. But then we, what would we actually do? We got a, actually got a value like down here, negative 2.82. And we also happen to, you know, since it's two-sided, we also look up here, 2.82. And we're saying, what is this total area? That total area is less than a percent. Less than 1% of the time if your hoe is true. Would we see a difference this large? This is a really rare result, or relatively rare result, if the um, if the null hypothesis were to be true. So we're going to go ahead and conclude. Uh, since our p value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. We have sufficient evidence. to conclude that the proportion of U.S. adults who would say yes has changed. From 2007 to 2008. Thirty minutes, got it done. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, you've got homework is nominally due tomorrow at seven thirty. I don't care if you turn it in a little late. You can turn it in on Wednesday with your quiz for all I care. I'm just writing down tomorrow because 
Your administrators want to see something turned in every day. If you turn something in late, shoot me an email. Say, hey, will you give me the points? And I will say, yes, I don't care. Thanks for watching to the end. Do you want to see another cat? Are there any cats handy? Oh, oh, we got a, a, a cat is coming for you. Her name is Minerva. She's the loudest. Oh, hello, Minerva. Whoop. This is Minerva, and she really doesn't care how she's held. She's a good girl. You want to be on TV more, Minerva? No, okay. She wants to chirp at birds. So there you go. Um, that's good. Oh, look up. Yeah, that's good. There's, there's my cat. Oh, okay. See you guys.